A Story House Book, Little Red Riding Hood, retold by Burnett Ford, illustrated by Tom Knight. Once upon a time, a little girl lived with her mother at the edge of the forest. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because her grandmother had made her a little red cape and hood, and she loved it. In fact, she never took it off. One sunny day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother handed her a basket full of baked goodies. Take this basket to Grandma, said Mother. She isn't feeling well, and these treats will help make her feel better. Yes, Mother, I will, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now don't stop to talk to any strangers, said Mother, and don't dilly-dally along the way. No, Mother, I won't, said Little Red Riding Hood, and off she went. Now, Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother lived all the way on the other side of the forest. It was a long walk, but there was a lot to look at along the way. There were birds, and bunnies, and chipmunks, and there were many lovely wildflowers. Little Red Riding Hood wished she could stop and smell the flowers beside the path, but she had promised her mother not to dilly-dally, so she hurried on. Before long, who would slink out of the woods but a big, bad, wicked old wolf? He stopped a little Red Riding Hood on the path. Since she had never seen a wolf before, she wasn't afraid. Where are you going, little Red Riding Hood? And why are you going so fast? asked the wolf. I'm on my way to Grandma's house on the other side of the forest, said little Red Riding Hood. She had forgotten her promise not to talk to any strangers. I'm taking her this basket of goodies to help her feel better. But there are so many flowers here, said the wolf. I bet your grandma would love a bouquet. You really ought to stop and pick a pretty bunch for her. That's a great idea, exclaimed Little Red Riding Hood. She set down her basket and began picking wildflowers. She had forgotten her promise not to dilly-dally along the way. The wolf already had a plan to have her for his lunch. As soon as Red Riding Hood stopped by the path, the wicked old wolf ran ahead to Grandma's cottage as fast as he could. Then he knocked on her door. Who's there? Grandma called from inside. The wolf answered in a voice as sweet as honey. It's Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma. I've bought you a surprise. When Grandma opened the door, the wicked old wolf pounced. He swallowed her whole in one big gulp. Then he put on her glasses and night clothes and jumped into her bed. He pulled the covers up under his chin and waited for the Little Red Riding Hood. Before too long, Little Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. Who's there? called the wolf in a voice like Grandma. It's Little Red Riding Hood, she called. I bought a surprise for you. Open the door and come in, dear, said the wolf in his best grandmotherly voice. Little Red Riding Hood tiptoed into the cottage. Although it was a little dim inside, she could see that her grandmother looked a bit strange. Why, Grandma, what big eyes you have, she said. The better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf in a voice like her grandmother's. And, Grandma, what big ears you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf in Grandma's voice. And Grandma, what big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to eat you with, my dear, snarled the wolf, and he jumped out of bed to pounce on Little Red Riding Hood. At that very moment, a strong young woodsman was passing by, and he heard the commotion. He broke down the door with his axe just in time to stop the wicked old wolf and knocked him out. Then the wolf man zipped open his stomach and there was grandma, safe and sound. Little Red Riding Hood gave her grandmother a big hug. After they all had shared the baked goodies, the strong young wolfsman took Little Red Riding Hood home to her mother. Red Riding Hood promised never again to dilly-dally or talk to strangers again. And they all lived happily ever after.
the end.